David Shipman reporting there. Joining me now in the studio is theoretical physicist Dr. James Gates. Dr. Gates, you met Stephen Hawkins several on, times. On many occasions. I would love to have been a fly on the wall to those conversations. Was this two big physicist brains talking about things I would not understand? No, not or really. Or was this the conversation of two men who share a passion? It was more a com conversation of people who shared the same passion for science. Stephen was an amazing person, and I once referred to him as the bravest physicist of all. Why? Well, I first met Stephen in 1980. Uh, there was a conference at Nuffield, and I was an attendee, so we interact with Stephen and he gave a speech and I was amazed that he t rose to that challenge and just performed brilliantly. What about his work? Was it his, the fact, if Stephen Hawking um, had not been bound to a wheelchair, he would still have been one of the greatest physicists ever. Absolutely. Well, the piece of his work that was a landmark set the foundation for the string theory. was as much in the work he did as in, the way, as in the disease he bore. Absolutely. The disease did not stop his mind from working at the highest levels that human minds can work, and that was something to be admired. Dr. Gates, his body to one extent limited what he could do. He couldn't set out, like other scientists, mathematical mm. derivations and equations and long-form explanations. So he had to be more concise. He had to be more abstract in the way that he explained things. Is that what brought him to the masses, do you think? Well, I think the, that it's a story for the ages. Uh, it's the, it is the prototypical story of a hero. Uh, enormous odds against success, succeeding, and then retaining his humanity and reaching out to people. This is something I think is a universal story. Lots of people have tweeted us today saying, we get that he was a big mind, but could you explain what he actually did for the common man? What he actually did that was so good f for mankind? So I know that you're made of the same matter as Stephen Hawking, so I've brought my <laughs> phone along, right? And I'm going to set you a little challenge. Can you, as okay. concisely as he did, in let's say 45 seconds, explain the 1971, 72 black hole me mechanics? Black hole mechanics, uh, can you do that? I will make the attempt. So in the 1971 paper, Stephen pointed out something that no one had thought about before. There are these things that were pieces of mass, they're called black holes, they come from Einstein's theory of general relativity. And Stephen looked at those, and there were other physicists, a physicist named Jacob, uh, Jacob um, Bernowski, and they looked at them and they figured out that these things aren't exactly black. When you say something's black, it means it emits nothing. But what Stephen figured out was that if you believe in a quantum mechanical universe, then it's got to spit something out. It's kind of like the sizzle of bacon, or you can think about it as the sizzle of space-time. Um, okay, I was stressed there with the clock ticking. Yeah. You handled it brilliantly. Well, you, you're, Cri Christian. Dr. Gates you, is a great mind. Dr. Gates is a great <laughs> mind. I, however, am not uh, such a great mind, and I can't unlock <laughs> the phone, and I lost the stop clock. So, but so it the, sounded pretty so good to me, and it sounded in time, Dr. Gates. It sounded pretty good. We, we didn't even manage to get the clock ticking on you. That's how limited Christian and I are. Um, if you were to say that there was one thing that the world understands now that it didn't understand because if Stephen Hawking's, you know, had not lived among us, what would it be? Stephen Hawking, I like to call him the black hole whisperer and the summoner of black hole. He brought this piece of, piece of maths into the realm of reality. And when it comes into the real, real world of reality for science, it means someday, perhaps, humanity will use these strange objects, perhaps to our benefit. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dr. Gates. Thank you very much. There you go. He gave us some